All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get these Zoom controls out of the way. My name is Josh Dreller. Oops, turn this camera on. My name is Josh Dreller. I'm the Senior Director of Content Marketing here at Sky, and welcome to Get Prep for Prime Day just around the corner. In fact, we just heard this morning when the days will be. Look, Prime Day, we know you've already put the ink, you know, the ink is already dry on all your plans. And hopefully, uh, if you're still making your initial plans now, you're a little too late. But we're we're here for you. I've got the Sky Retail Media Experts at your disposal. We're going to share some tips, some tricks, some best practices, just some final things to chew on. Hopefully, you'll take away a couple great nuggets that will help you maximize your Prime Day. And of course, Prime Day, it's bigger than just sales. Uh, the ability to generate new customers, to get a bunch of browsers in your targeting pool that you can turn, you know, browsers to shoppers, shoppers to fans, fans to loyalists, all these things help your ag algorithm, help you sell throughout the year. So Prime Day is so important beyond sales, but of course, sales are very important. And as I mentioned, uh, our, my colleague Nico shared this today, Prime Day is now on. I don't know why they keep the dates so hidden uh, for so long, but I guess maybe to generate some excitement. So Prime Day coming 11th and 12th, that means we're just weeks away. So sit back, listen to our uh, retail media experts, and maybe, like I said, take away a few great nuggets of inspiration that, that you can do to pr uh, pr um, prop up while you prep up your Prime Day plans. Uh, we did a consumer survey, a thousand person consumer survey just a few weeks ago about how they're going to spend during Amazon Prime Day. It's very important for us to understand how consumers are thinking, especially because of what's going on with the economy and inflation. And sure, more than half of people that we uh, surveyed did say that it will have some effect on their spending habits. But look over here. The vast majority are definitely going to spend uh, on Prime Day and 77%, so more than three-fourths said they're going to spend the same or more than last year. So if you think about it, yes, the, econo the economy has put a little pinch on things and pinch on spending, but when these big deal days roll around, that's when consumers know they can make their uh, money stretch. So super important, especially if you've seen light sales this year. Prime Day is even more important this year. And it's super sophisticated and complex. It's not just a big shopping day. There are things that are happening outside of even Amazon. For example, two thirds of our uh, cons of the consumers that we surveyed said that they will be looking at other retailers on that day. So Prime Day creates this sort of feeding, feeding frenzy or shopping frenzy that spills over to other retailers. So knowing that is very important. They call it the halo effect. Uh, over half said they will be visiting walmart.com or going to a store these days. So that just tells you just how valuable uh, Prime Day can be on Amazon and outside. And Prime Day even goes beyond Amazon advertising. 94% of consumers say they've used Google to research products and 63% say they've actually clicked a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad that has brought them to an Amazon product detail page. So, you know, it's not just contained in Amazon, both the shopping happens off of Amazon as well as the research and the advertising can happen off of Amazon. So bringing all of your, your channels to bear at this point, all of your, your retail channels to bear, your advertising channels to bear are super, super important uh, this Prime Day uh, and every Prime Day. Before we get started, let me give you a little information, a little housekeeping for this webinar. Of course, you are in listen-only mode. You'll be hearing me and uh, my esteemed colleagues very quickly. If you have any questions for myself or the panel, feel free to put them in the Q&A button. You can, also ask, you can also ask if you have any technical difficulties. My esteemed colleague, Dasha Korbelnikova, is listening, so feel free to ask her if you have any problems. She will also help you with sound issues, but we've learned that one of the best ways to deal with sound issues is just kind of change how you're listening. So if you're on the phone right now, maybe switch over to computer audio. If you're on computer audio, maybe switch over to, to, the, to a call. If you need any help beyond that, once again, Dasha will be listening on the Q&A side. And then the number one question we always get for our webinars, will I get the recording? Will I get the slides? I want to check it out again. I want to dive deep in the material or I want to share it with my colleagues or clients. Yes, tomorrow you'll get an email. You'll get a link to the <clears throat> slides. You'll get a link to the recording. You also get a, a couple links to some other goodies like the Amazon consumer survey that we did. Uh, and I'll talk more about those throughout the webinar. All right. So what are we actually talking about today? So 
to know where we're going, we got to know where we've been. The, one of the best ways to do that is look at last year. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to review Prime Day 2022 results. And then we're going to go into the three phases of Prime Day, the lead up, the event itself, and the weeks that follow. Each presents its own challenges, its own opportunities. So you got to kind of think differently for those three phases. And then finally, we're going to be talking about two very, very specific areas that my retail media experts um, think that you should really be focusing on this Prime Day. And that is your measurement mindset, of course, through the three phases of Prime Day, as well as that halo effect we talked about, how the shopping frenzy spills outside of Amazon. These are two areas that will absolutely help your Prime Days um, be more successful if you were to focus on them. And then, as I mentioned before, time permitting, we'll get to some of your questions. So go ahead and, and fill up our QA and we'll get to those at the end. But now I'd like to introduce my esteemed panelists. Uh, first, uh, we have Melissa. Melissa, how are you doing? If you could introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Melissa. I'm a member of our services team here at Sky, where I support brands in the creation and implementation of campaign strategies. Um, I'm looking forward to discussing Prime Day with everybody. Thank you so much. And Prime Day itself, Melissa, do you have any thoughts of what you might be looking for on Prime yes. Day? Yes. Yes, I am looking for an instant pot. I need some new gadgets in my kitchen, so I am on the lookout for good deals. Excellent. That thing is amazing. I, I use it all the time. All right. And then next we have Peter. Peter, please join us. Let us know what you're doing. Hi, Josh. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well this morning. Thank you. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Please uh, well, tell us more you. about what you do at Sky and then what you're looking for this uh, Prime Day. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm Peter, VP of Client Success here at Sky. So I help support our clients uh, and my team make sure that our clients are enabled to use our platform effectively. And uh, for Prime Day, I am in the market for a Dyson stick vacuum because mine is on the fritz. Understandably. And then finally, rounding us out this panel, Nico. Nico, how are you doing there? Very good, Josh. How are you? Uh, what are you doing at Sky and, and what are you looking for this Prime Day? Yeah, so my role here at Sky is I'm um, director of strategic services. Basically, I work with clients to help them kind of understand the channel base and how it's ever changing. So I think it's it's uh, getting more and more complicated, but mature uh, as it grows. Um, and and I think I have a very active role also in kind of linking that to the Sky suite and how can we best leverage the tool and, and the platform to to help organizations kind of achieve their individual and and, and business goals. Excellent. Um, and what are you looking for 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 Prime Day, maybe? Um, so I've been looking for a talent for the kids, uh, so hoping that I, I get one um, soon because I think uh, the, the the car journeys are getting a bit long. <laughs> right on. Excellent. All right. Hopefully some of you have some good ideas what you're going to get in Prime Day, get some awesome deals, even leading up to Prime Day. You're going to see some awesome deals starting soon. All right. All this information or most of this information can be found in our new report, Get Prep for Prime Day 2023. In fact, Melissa and Peter both contributed cha uh, chapters. We'll be talking about their material here later on the webinar. You will get a link to this in your email tomorrow. So be looking out for that. All right, looking back to Prime Day 2022, my colleague, Chris Costello, our Senior Director of Marketing Research here at Sky, wrote up analysis after Prime Day last year. So let's go back to that and dive in. Um, so advertisers spent as much as four times as much during the Prime Day event as they did in the days leading up. So what are we looking at with this chart? What you're seeing here is June 1st, 2022, all the way up to the Prime Day event. Now you can see, don't let this little line fool you. This is just the baseline of those days. We're still talking about millions and millions of dollars uh, being spent on Amazon advertising. But the major jump, as you can see, happens you know, a couple of days before Prime Day, and then bam, uh, the Prime Day events itself, four times as much. And the good news is that paid off. Ad-supported sales revenue was up almost four and a half times. And of course, for different categories, different brands, they might be a little more, a little less. But once again, compared against the revenue that uh, Amazon ads were driving uh, leading up to the, you know, the five weeks before the Prime Day period, uh, you can see that the big jump happens. So the big takeaways here is be ready to spend because you can generate that revenue from it. But here's something that you really need to focus on is that, you know, advertisers are willing to spend more per click during the event. As we can see in the five weeks leading up, 
around, you know, a dollar cost per click was the average across Sky's retail media clients in aggregate. But then for the Prime Day itself, jumping, you know, almost 60% up to a dollar 60. One thing that I noticed uh, looking at this chart earlier was that there's a slope. So, uh, you know, to the end of Prime Day is when people really started to raise their CPCs and get there. But there's some opportunity potentially here in the, the first day or the day before to bid a little higher and take advantage of that traffic as it's coming. Maybe you'll beat some of your competitors and rivals to the punch that hadn't maybe budgeted or thought to increase their cost per clicks by that much. But we're seeing, you know, in some cases, in some categories, twice the CPC, but in aggregate, about 60% higher. And then uh, versus the 2021 Prime Day, you can see, you know, more impressions, more clicks, um, more spend, and, uh, and of course, sales too. So it really pays off. We talked about the three phases of Prime Day, how each one you know, offers their own opportunities, their own challenges. What are those three phase, phases? So we have the lead up, which we're in now. It's the two to four weeks before Prime Day. Then we get to the Prime Day or the Prime Days itself, the execution where it's uh, everything's coming fast and furious. Real-time reporting is important. Real-time optimization, you gotta be looking at everything. You know, you miss a little on one day, you could really blow it. So make sure you're really prepared for those big days. I mean, those should be calendar cleared. We're in looking at numbers as 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 often as possible, intraday if you can, uh, during the event. And then post Prime Day, not just the for the few weeks that are past it, but even in the months that follow, the ability to re-engage those people, people that might have looked at your products that have never engaged with you before. Browsers turn you can turn those into shoppers. People who bought on Prime Day, you can upsell them. You know accessories or other models or other options that you have, and hopefully all these things turn into more reviews, more sales, which up your uh, Amazon uh, algorithm that helps you advertise and succeed, and your products get seen more. So huge day, huge days or uh, Prime Day. All right, let's start with the lead up. Right, we're in there right now. What are you doing? What are you doing today? What are you doing right now? to help make your Prime Day a success. Uh, Melissa, so if you could join us real quick. So you wrote the chapter on this in our report. You spoke about three specific things. Can you uh, share with our attendees what those are? Yes. So the big three things that you still have time to focus on are going to be content, advertising strategy, and budget planning. Um, these are top of mind for me because these three areas can be so impactful. Um, within the next few weeks, prepping prepping your teams, prepping yourself on how to properly manage these. Um, so I'll go through these just really briefly and give you some insights on some tips I have for each of them. Um, the first part being content. I think completely maximizing, having full descriptions, quality images are gonna make a huge impact on people converting once they get to your product page. Um, the advice I'd like to give people is, you know, take a step back and actually experience your own pages like a shopper would. Um, look through the descriptions, look through the images, go through your videos. Does it tell you what the product is, does what it's like to experience it? Um, and then pair that with your marketing knowledge of knowing, you know, which keywords need to be in your titles, um, how to manage a plus content to curate that positive experience. That'll go a long ways. Um, I think we've all been on product detail pages that weren't as insightful or not as strong. And we've kind of questioned the quality of the product. So make sure that the quality of the content reflects the quality of the product. Um, advertising strategy, whether you're doing deals or not, um, adver advertising is going to be huge on that day. So ready or not, here it comes. Um, if you're not doing deals, still prepare your teams to manage efficiently. If you are, you need to go beyond your evergreen strategy and evergreen coverage to meet shoppers at different points of their journey, wherever they're at on the site. Use display to target browsing shoppers, uh, people who are previously curious in your products or similar products, plaster sponsored brands at the top of search with lifestyle images to capture attention, use sponsored products to look like native organic placements within search results, and do this two to four weeks out, well, as much as you can now before Prime Day to make sure you're building up that momentum and relevancy. Um, and then this last part, budget planning. I think we'll go into this in a little bit more detail too, but the influx of traffic is going to deplete your advertising budgets faster than any regular day, even the time periods leading up. 
So being able to prepare yourself using historical data, other full time period data to plan ahead is going to be really, really great to set yourself up for success. Awesome. And I have to back her up on the lifestyle images thing because um, we've seen the data. We know that that's a very important thing to do. Yes, it's important to show the product, but also show the product in use in a sense uh, with those lifestyle images. If you don't have them, you still have time to get them up before Prime Day. Okay, everyone, all panelists, cameras up. And let's start going into the material. All right. Things to focus on in the lead up. Let me get the Zoom toolbar out of the way. So inventory management. This is not something that marketers generally have control over, but it's something that you want to work with your partners within shipping, within fulfillment, to make sure that you have enough inventory for your deals. The last thing you want to do is, is spend a lot of money on adver Amazon advertising, not be able to, to uh, ship those out, not be able to support those sales. Uh, that can also ding your Amazon algorithm, of course. Um, and then if you use Sky for Sky clients that are, are, are um, listening today, you can leverage our brand analytics integration to get more accurate inventory insights. Okay, and the balance and, and then balance and diversification. You know, you want to really diversify and kind of look at things as a portfolio approach. Of course, your, your popular products, you know those things that sell that people are very interested in, those are important to showcase. But even less popular items may see more traffic, maybe may see more interest. So don't forget those. Make sure that you're promoting those as well. And then a strategy that Melissa shared with me is pushing your lower price products. Because remember, the more people that you can get to buy during Amazon Prime, the more that you can retarget them and target them later throughout the year. So pushing those best deals, those low price products, maybe you can turn some customers and then use that throughout the year. And then advertising optimization, make a diverse campaign. We know that the formats, most people are using sponsored products, but you know, sponsored brands, brand videos, display, DSP, see what you can do. If you haven't put those things into place between now and then you have time. Let's get those up as soon as possible. <clears throat> you also want to launch your campaign soon. I mean, if you're not starting to promote products now, this might be something you want to look at. You might want to start thinking about that because people, as we know, are looking for deals. They're thinking about Prime Day. They're getting excited. If they see a product that they want to buy on Prime Day now for a low price, they might actually pull the trigger on it. Uh, keyword match is a good thing. Our, our uh, expert team tells me that that you should be allocating around 60% to exact match. It gives you that really great control and granular optimization. Uh, include top of search placement modifiers to really make sure you're seen. Um, Peter, when it comes to underperforming keywords, I mean, with sponsored uh, products, the main format that Amazon advertisers are using, it's so important to really keep, uh, uh, really put focus and attention on what keywords you're bidding on. So tell us a little bit about how Sky can help. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have to go through, if we're marketers, our search term uh, analysis, we have to look at the search term report and see, you know, what keywords are, are performing well, what keywords are driving traffic, what keywords are driving conversions. Um, and that can be a laborious task if you're just pulling those reports from the publishers. You know, you might have thousands, tens of thousands of keywords potentially to come through. Um, so using a tool like what Sky offers in our search term analysis tool uh, it really allows you to help automate some of that process. So, you know, by way of example, let's say uh, I'm selling bike helmets, right? And I'm bidding on the term bicycle because as, you know, sort of a broad match keyword, I see it as complimentary. I want to show up alongside bike bicycles and, and, uh, and have people buy my helmet uh, in that same basket when they purchase their bicycle. But, you know, maybe at the same time, I'm showing up alongside bike racks, I'm showing up alongside bike shoes, I'm showing up alongside, you know, books on how to fix your bike. Uh, and I find that those keywords are underperforming. Um, it might take me a long time to discover that and going through a search term report, but with search term analysis in Sky, we have an AI based tool that looks for themes of keywords that are underperforming and will present those to you um, in a cluster. So, you know, if I'm selling my bike helmets and I keep showing up for bike racks and different variations of that, I can go ahead and negate bike rack and all the different variations in the theme if I feel like they're underperforming. So this is one tool that re will really help drive efficiency as you're uh, you know, promoting your products with different match types and, and different keywords over uh, 
times like Prime Day. You know, I always say turn over these kinds of tasks to robots. They know what they're doing. In fact, if you go to Sky's website, sky.io, you go to the Marketer Insights and see our blog, you'll see there's a blog we announced today that we were, we won again the AI Breakthrough Award for Best Advertising Solution. Um, search Term Analysis is just one of our great AI tools. We have a whole host of others. We've been doing this for some time. All right. Yeah, more things to think about to during the... Your thought there. What's that, God? Yeah, please do. My apologies. Uh, just to add to your thought there, I think one of the important things about the way we approach this as well, AI-generated insights that are, uh, you know, advertiser verified and enabled, right? So we're not necessarily doing everything behind the curtain in a black box. This is something where we are making you more efficient as a marketer because we are driving these insights via AI that would take a person a long time to generate takes a machine just a little bit of time, but then the human validates and, uh, and you know, enables that. Yeah, search term analysis, um, often one of the best tools that that we offer that our retail media clients just love. It, as Peter said, allows you to fly through and, and immediately just start adding negative, start uh, pulling out uh, irrelevant keywords. Uh, and you can do that and, and you can see here. And if you'd like to see a demo of that, please go to our website, book a demo and you can see it firsthand as well as some of our other great cutting edge innovation. All right, continue the lead up here. As Melissa said, bids, budget, super important here. You do not want to run out of budget. You do not want to have planned to have little budget. So make sure that you're there. And as I showed with 2022 results, there is an opportunity to bid higher in the first day of Prime Day. By that, by the next day, your rivals, your competitors are going to realize they need to bid up. So make sure you're ready for the very first day of Prime Day, or even a few days beforehand, and and prepare that budget. Hopefully, that's that's a no brainer. You already have a lot of that budget to go, but uh, just another little uh, best practice for you. Think about how you can spend more money those days. Maybe pull some from the other days of of July, and then Nico, you know. Amazon advertising is is not in a vacuum. You're, there's many competitors, many rivals trying to steal away those customers. And so you'll see in each of the three phases, dealing with competitors is super is super key. But Nico, tell us about, you know, a little bit what, what uh, marketers can do in the lead up here to uh, Prime yes. Day. Yes, thank you, George. And I think it's to build up also a little bit more on, on what Melissa said about the budgets and the bids. I think uh, uh, oftentimes we see that CPCs and these event days tend to be lower at the end of the day as well. And that's when many competitors have a run out, of, run out of budget as well. So I think that definitely creates opportunities in terms of investment uh, and being more efficient in certain times of the day uh, that can be often overlooked if we're not on alert and we're not proactively looking at, at what's going on and preparing for it. And I think also having a, a, some um, extra budget in case you know any opportunities arise uh, that we had not foreseen uh, initially, I think is gonna be very important. Um, so yeah, um, I think be ready in general to monitor your competition. Uh, you know, I think if, if you have a, 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 even during the event, if you see that you have a, a competitive advantage from a, you know, a USP in terms of like having a better pricing, or, uh, even if, if some competitor ads are not showing at the end of the day, I think that's where we have to be quick, uh, and proactive, uh, and react. And I think that can definitely pay off and, and, you know, improve even further the, the performance of the day. An event. Excellent. And then you can use, if you're a Sky client, you can use Brand Insights to get a little bit more understanding of your share voice across the infinite digital shelf. Okay. Absolutely. So the lead up, super important. We're here now. If you can be doing those things to, to drive extra sales, extra traffic, extra interest, extra engagement, you should be doing it. But really the big part is the day or the days of the uh, of Prime Day as well as the event itself. So to help us, uh, Julia Nelson, she wrote the chapter and the report about the big day and the, and the weeks that follow. I'm going to show you, she recorded a video for us, luckily. Um, I'm just going to show you a small portion of it. And then tomorrow, there'll be a link that you can go and watch her full video. Here we go. I'm Julia Nelson. I'm a product manager here at Sky, and I focus specifically on our optimization products from portfolios to budget navigator to other AI type of insight tools. This prime day, I'm probably going to dabble in the kids category and explore and browse, see what they have to offer. Uh, summer's in the full swing, so we'll see what, what I can find. 
Yeah, these huge tentpole events are certainly, uh, you know, high stakes from a visit visibility standpoint, whether that's internally or to consumers uh, browsing and shopping for products. Um, and it can really do a lot depending on what your goals are. Um, a lot of brands come in with those deal of the days with high, high stock uh, sell through goals, things like that. So there's a lot of money there on the table um, to get through and advertising can be that vehicle to help that that happen. Um, and then inversely, regardless of your goal, um, or regardless of your deal rather, there's you know opportunity for new customer acquisition um, and remaining um, ahead of the competition and kind of capitalizing on that opportunity since there are so many new shoppers on um, Amazon that day or shopping new categories that perhaps they haven't before. Yeah, a lot of the retail things are, you know, inked uh, as far as, you know, deals or product inventory, things like that, and kind of working from the top down, you know, what's your ultimate measure of success? Is it deal sell through? Is it top line sales, new customer acquisition, um, you know, certain priority keywords, visibility against competitors, whatever those kind of broader things are, start to ladder down into your tactical campaign type of strategy. Um, that campaign strategy could mean new campaign launches, um, maybe more budget allocation towards certain and ad types, depending on what those tactics are. Um, and then from there, you can kind of build out a budgeting strategy, um, you know, coming in with a plan uh, that likely will need to be dynamic, uh, but at least you can carve that out within your July and your Q3 budget uh, so that you have proper, you know, proper money to pull from uh, for those days. Um, and then again, kind of uh, align those things to your broader metrics and not getting too hyper-focused um, on just the tactical attribution, but, you know, what what that advertising is doing and what that vehicle uh, for success ultimately is beyond advertising. All right. And like I said, we'll send you a link to the blog post where you can watch that video in full. Let's keep going here. There we go. All right. So the days of and the, and the after the event areas to focus on um, Nico, once again, competitive uh, monitoring, understanding the, you know, where you sit, along that competitive set, super important, even uh, before, as well as the prime day and after itself. Yeah, and continuing with that kind of proactive approach to, to the prime day, then you can definitely do a lot of optimizations before, but I think uh, uh, the edge is gonna, uh, you're gonna get it by uh, remaining um, kind of active and proactive with managing your campaigns the same day, uh, not only on, on on your advertising dashboard, but also it's, it's very useful to go on, on, on Amazon itself and, and start, uh, you know, kind of observing what's going on. But I think if we go back to, to kind of the advertising performance, uh, I mean, uh, unlike previous events this year with Amazon, I think uh, we've, give, we've gotten the, the Amazon stream technology that allows us to get data uh, on an hourly basis. And I think that's a very useful tool for, for events like this, in which, um, you know, we we we're kind of advertising on high volume uh, throughout the whole day. And I think now the, the samples of data are much more representative on an hourly basis and we can make big decisions that are going to change the performance of the whole event. Uh, so definitely encourage using uh, these hourly data, especially dividing it in different parts of the day, perhaps morning, noon, or uh, evening and, and sorry, afternoon and evening and, and understanding how your consumers are interacting with, with, with the product. Uh, you know, is it cheaper to advertise in certain uh, hours of the day and are the conversions better also at certain times of the day? Uh, and perhaps if you're spending more time on those um, times of the day, if you're spending more money on those times of the day that are not necessarily driving the highest uh, or the bulk of your revenue for, for the event, then uh, perhaps on day two, if, if you haven't had the chance to do it on day one, you can do some tweaks and uh, and make sure that you're kind of rectifying that error uh, and start investing when when you're going to drive the highest value for, for your brand. Yeah, and you mentioned Amazon Stream. If you don't have intraday reporting, uh, how important is it during Prime Day? I mean, super important. So you can, you know, get code to Amazon Stream, but, you know, you can use a, uh, a product like Sky. We have it all integrated so you can access those reports and you don't have to learn SQL and learn all those other things that you need to get to that, uh, that those very important, that very important data. I mean, imagine 11 a.m. you see something that you can make a change that could change, you know, that could add to the next day and a half of your prime day results, super, super important. And then allocation, budget allocation, we've already mentioned a few times, so, you know, very, very careful how you plan and how you budget for not just your, those two days or the lead in or the after, but also by ad format, by product, super important. And then your top performing campaigns, Peter, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I think 
this might seem really obvious, right? We want to put our money behind the, the top performers, uh, but I think it's important to have clarity on what you're trying to accomplish. So are you running a deal because you're trying to liquidate inventory? Um, you know, and do we want to just push as much traffic there as we possibly can? That might dictate what our keyword bidding strategies are. Uh, and then we might also be looking for increasing share of voice as, as another goal, or we might be looking to drive top line sales. Uh, so all of those things need to be uh, clarified and aligned with how you're, you're strategizing and how you're allocating budget to your campaigns. Once you know that, then you can also set up rules, right? So using a platform like Sky, we have automation whereby you can say, you know, if these campaigns or these sets of campaigns are hitting certain thresholds, I want to increase the budget. I want to increase the bids, uh, you know, during these time frames. If on the other hand, you know, these, this campaign starts to underperform, I want to decrease budgets, right? So effectively what you're doing is moving budget between different campaigns, between different product sets. Um, and, you know, you might have multiple goals. If I'm a brand, I've got a, you know, a wide array of inventory and my, you know, different assortment in my product catalog. Uh, you know, I need to clarify where am I liquidating? Where am I driving share of voice? Where am I driving top line sales? Uh, where am I just concerned about getting the best CPC or ROAS? Um, so get those types of goals defined, uh, align them with the correct campaigns, and then set up the automation that's going to make your life easier on Prime Day such that you can move the money around uh, in close to real time to help meet the goals that you've aligned behind. Yeah, and, and being able to pivot and adapt to the conditions, that's absolutely key. I mean, you know, keep a close eye on your campaigns. Even if you have budgeted a lot, you might start to see some of that budget run out. Maybe the, the prices are higher than you thought. Maybe there's more interest in certain products that, that weren't there before Prime Day. So keep an eye on things and don't be afraid to pivot and be afraid to adapt. That really shows how uh, successful um, you can be. And then... Um, Melissa, we talked about engaging and how all the different tools that Amazon provides you, Amazon advertising provides you to re-engage people. Let's talk about that and what you can do doing in terms of customer reconnection. Yeah, there's a lot of work you can do here again ahead of time to do your research to understand who you should be reconnecting with. Um, you know, use your own historical data, use audience behavior data to understand, you know, who has already interacted with your ad or similar products to retarget them and get them back into your own sales funnel um, to experience, you know, your brand and your products all over again. Um, additionally, you know, targeting your competitors to see if you can take that traffic away from them and back to your own pages is going to be huge. You know, not everybody's going to be running prime day deals. And this was kind of mentioned earlier, you know, if you have a more competitive price or an offer, um, take that sale away from them and bring them back to your own brand. Um, and then of course, overall, these tactics will work together to increase your market share, your coverage during that day and kind of trickle in and have a ripple effect after the event. Awesome. Excellent. And then post prime day, you can learn a lot from what happened prime day. When so much happens in such a short amount of time, there's great insights that you can use for the rest of the year, especially looking forward to Q4. Maybe Prime Day is a great time to check, uh, check uh, product con uh, detail page content, to check images, videos, see if they're working, see what consumers are interested in. Um, so using those, using Prime Day and looking back and evaluating and analyzing what happened uh, for Sky Clients, you can use our category and dimension tool to make it so easy to compare performance across different categories, different types, different options, and then looking at how your customers did. Were the, tar the targeting that you used, uh, did that work uh, during Prime Day? Is that something that maybe you could use for, you know, big tentpole events that are coming up in Q4? Uh, and, and if anything, use Prime Day as a way to look ahead on how you might um, benefit during the end of the year shopping season. And then once again, competitor, it's important, you know, we talked about competitor monitoring and, and keep an eye on your rivals during the lead up, as well as the event. But of course, uh, post Prime Day, make sure that you go after because if somebody, you know, when during deal days, consumers are looking at multiple products before they're making up their mind. So remember, your competitors, your rivals have the same access to some of the targeting retargeting that you have. So get to them quickly. Uh, use Amazon ads 
amazing retargeting capabilities to uh, engage them and then build upon those customer relationships. You can offer special deals, um, exclusive content to people who purchase for you, get them to purchase more, get them to write reviews, all those kinds of things. Prime Day doesn't stop when Prime Day ends. Uh, you definitely, the weeks to follow, the months to follow, you can do a lot of things to use that data, use those insights, those targeting pools you built up to help make the rest of your year successful. Um, one of the goodies you're going to get in tomorrow's email is a link to our 2023 State of Retail Media survey. We we spoke to over 150 retail media experts. We asked them things about how they're spending, where the budgets are coming from, what kind of technology they use what they think of the data uh, that is offered to them by retail media and many other really great insights into how your peers, other retail media marketers are using this channel. So you will get a link to this as well. You, you, you can go to sky right now, sky.io, go to our research section, scroll down. You can see not only the prep for prime day report, but also our state of media report. But once again, it'll be in your email tomorrow in a link. All right. Two distinct categories that our team has identified that can really help make your Prime Day successful. The measurement and having the right mindset across all three phases in terms of your measurement, as well as taking advantage of that halo effect where the shopping frenzy spills outside of Amazon. So let's start with your measurement mindset within our prep for Prime Day report. Our colleague, Kevin Weiss, our VP of Retail Media here at Sky, um, wrote a great chapter, um, and then he recorded a video for us. Once again, you'll get a link to this video tomorrow. Let's check out what he had to say. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm the head of industry leads for retail media, and my team helps customers determine if the sky is a good fit for their business. Uh, this Prime Day, I'm shopping for deals on some axe throwing supplies for my stepbrother who's uh, getting married and uh, is looking for some more entertainment in the backyard. Prime Day for a retail brand is, is table stakes. You, you got to hit this tentpole event uh, successfully, and it's a cross functional team effort uh, to make the most of an opportunity where. You can reach a lot of end consumers. You can move a lot of products. You can build a lot of momentum on a new product launch. And so for, for whatever category you're in, uh, there's an opportunity there. And whatever stage of selling you are, whether you're a vendor or a seller, uh, Prime Day represents opportunity uh, to reach both prime customers and non-prime customers. So hundreds of millions of customers uh, around the globe are going to participate in this, and there's just opportunity galore of brands. So really, it just it boils down to, to that cross-functional effort to uh, make the most of that opportunity to sell your product. Well, to, to establish baseline, measurement uh, is critical because without a baseline uh, to compare against, it, it's hard to know uh, it's hard to give context to your results. So from that standpoint, uh, you're maintaining baseline on things like glance views, total sales, uh, return on ad sales, and all of those different uh, KPIs, maybe even uh, for a newer product, you know, it's add to cart or a product that's gonna go on a promotion, it's add to cart. But whatever your, um, your KPIs are, uh, measurement is, is critical. Uh, if you don't have that, right, you can't manage what you don't measure. So for the lead-up phase or the lead-in phase that, uh, that, that all brands or all advertisers are going through, uh, they're looking at a specific set of KPIs uh, for some or multiple ASINs in their catalog that are going to be the focal point uh, during Prime Day. And they're, they're going to look to analyze uh, in the lead-out phase after the event is over. All right. So once again, um, Kevin wrote the measurement chapter for our Prime Day report. You'll get a link to the blog post where this you can watch this full video and learn more. Now on to the halo effect. This is the second of our mastery uh, things to focus on. We know that people are shopping outside of Amazon and looking for deals. They're going to, you know, once they settle on what you know, they're looking for, they're going to check out the best price for that, look at other brands for the same product or a similar product, and then even go outside of Amazon to make sure there's not a great, a better deal outside of it. So how can you take advantage of this? Um, 
Before we get started, Peter, can you take us through some of the numbers that we saw in the previous prime days just to kind of really demonstrate what's happening here with the halo effect? Yeah, Josh, uh, I think the halo effect is is certainly real. As you mentioned in the survey at the top of the call, uh, two thirds of shoppers are planning to browse other retailers on prime day. I know that I do, I price compare, I uh, look at, you know, competitive brands, uh, see what other retailers are offering. And oftentimes other retailers are doing promotions around Prime Day because they know there's increased traffic, there's increased eyeballs. Um, so it's, as Kevin just said, important to have a baseline and measure uh, you know, how you're performing on Prime Day. And that applies to you know, this halo effect concept. So how am I performing on other retailers? Just some context on the data that you see on the screen here. The way we're measuring this is we look at the 30-day average in the lead up to Prime Day for these KPIs. So how was I doing from a daily spend, a daily sales, CPC, ROAS perspective in the 30 days leading up to Prime Day? Uh, and then during the, the two days of Prime Day, how did I perform? And that's what these percentages are comparing. So as you can see, you know, historically, we have seen a bump in spend in sales on other retailers. Um, however, it's retailer to retailer, it really depends. And it's really going to depend on your category, your assortment. So it's important to get down even to the product level to say, you know, how did I perform last Prime Day with this product? Um, you know, if I'm a grocery brand on Instacart, am I gonna see the same uh, amount of interest and lift in, in uh, you know, spend and sales? Um, you know, it might not be the case. So maybe I take a different strategy. If I'm a CPG brand, if I'm a consumer electronics brand, especially, you know, I'm probably gonna see a bump and I, I wanna take advantage of that. So you can get more data on the halo effect and what we have seen from our advertisers uh, on our blog, we go into to more detail, we cover more metrics, we go down to the category level to show um, you know, how the halo effect impacts uh, different retailers in different categories so that you can plan around uh, how to strategize uh, for your brand during this time. But you know, I'll leave you with the, the final thought here that the halo effect is certainly real. And I think uh, advertisers need to take advantage of it. We need to be investing um, across other retail channels, whether that's promoting competitive products to deals that are being run on Amazon, or whether that's promoting complementary products to deals that you're running on Amazon. Do that across these other retailers, take advantage of the increased traffic, get some additional sales. Excellent. Great, great words. And then let's look at some tips that you can use because uh, this is really seems like untouched territory for some brands. I mean, if you're not thinking about the halo effect, like truly, truly thinking about it, um, you should be because there's some there's some awesome opportunities. So first of all, so the stock up, Melissa, tell us about this. I mean, marketers and, and the inventory, I mean, there's such a connection versus any other channel with retail media and actually the products being sold. Yeah, I think I think the theme here is, you know, the volume doesn't end when the event ends. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of shoppers who are maybe doing some impulse buying, but there's going to be a lot of people still lingering and lo looking for deals after and shopping around to different channels to find maybe things they felt like they missed or didn't know or something that they wanted. So being able to have that presence and have that inventory wherever those consumers are going to be is going to be really, really critical the day after, the week after, the month after. Because as soon as you start capturing all that traffic and your velocity starts increasing, the more exposure exposure you're going to get too. So back it up with having an inventory plan in place for that ripple effect. Yeah, I mean, live in abundance, people. You know, think just imagine that all these great sales is going to just generate more client, more customers. Those customers are going to tell their friends, their family. So you might sell a lot more than you had even thought and even budget for. Just so just make sure you have everything there. And then the wider audience, not only can you sell more, but you can build, once again, build your consumer base, build your customer base, excuse me, understanding that consumers are going across to other retailers, not just to sell, but also to engage them. They also have retargeting opportunities. So building up that, even if people just browse your products on Walmart, browse your par products on Target, you can then um, cultivate those, those leads and prospects over time on, on, throughout the year. 
uh, to generate more sales. And then even as you know, Peter mentioned at brand to brand level, it, it may be completely different. You might find that certain brands and certain products, certain options work better on Walmart during Prime Day that work better on Target or some of your other retailers. So really think about that. And if you start this year, then you have some really great data to use in subsequent Prime Days in order to really master this thing. Um, also, your advertising game, it's super, super important. Um, you need to have your, your strategy set up. You need to think about, you know, very strategically about how you're promoting things. Um, and even your non-branded keywords. So your category level keywords, your general uh, keywords, that's super important uh, during these days, not just on Amazon, as we said, but across the other retailers. Finally, Nico, tell me more. I mean, Sky, you know, we have a lot of omnichannel clients, people, brands and, and agencies using us for search, for social, for retail media, for apps. We we looked at some data we before. We know that consumers are looking for information on Google that are driving them to Amazon. They are being aware of products and discovering products on social. So what can marketers do to bring some of their other channels and, and efforts to bear here? Definitely, Josh, and I think you, you want to be that brand that comes up on, on top of search right and across other platforms. I think, um, yeah, as you will say, um, it's, it's no secret, I think, that traditionally and, and for quite a few years now, Amazon has been quite generous in rewarding uh, those uh, brands and, and, and products that are able to, to attract and drive external traffic to Amazon. You know, we, we know that Amazon likes that, and rightly so. Um, and so, and so that has a, a very good effect, not only on the day and, and, and obviously driving the traffic and, and uh, the, the possibility of increasing sales and revenue for the day, but also in general, uh, it, does, it does favor the algorithm in terms of from an organic perspective for Amazon to keep uh, driving uh, customers from, from within Amazon to, to your uh, product page. So that has a very positive impact on, on that. But I think other than that, obviously driving those, uh, you know, external traffic from social, uh, making sure that all customers that are out there looking for deals or, or not necessarily on, on Amazon, but outside of Amazon are aware that, you know, your brand is one that uh, is offering, you know, great deals, has got great products, has got great value. And I think kind of driving that uh, is definitely, um, is definitely great to do it across every single channel, especially if you have budget to spare. I think um, traditionally, perhaps uh, you could just throw money at, at Amazon on Prime Day and, and you know have great performance and, and all of that. I think these days with higher competition, higher CPCs, I think we have to be a bit more creative with what, how we spend the budget. And, and I think uh, you know the omni-channel, and as you guys mentioned earlier, cross-retailer, I think these are all great options um that that you know can be implemented strategically based on what you see has performed best uh, in the past absolutely and you got to be measuring that that those efforts and you can use that there's a variety of ways to do it amazon attribution you can work through sky to uh, measure the incoming traffic from your other channels so that you know how they really impact your sales uh, and then, of course, your product listings, you know, make compelling content, make compelling product listings. I mean, this is good for Prime Day. Melissa mentioned it at the top of the, you know, at the top of the webinar about the lead in. Certainly, it matters throughout the year. But, you know, sometimes you might be testing, you know, might be testing new images. Might This is not the time to do that. The time for Prime Day is to use what you know that works and make sure it's up and ready, not just for Prime Day itself, but for the weeks that follow. And even the weeks uh, that go by, people look for Prime Day deals. They don't find a deal, you know, during the actual event. So then they're still thinking about that Instapod or that Dyson vacuum. So they're going, they might go back in the weeks that follow. So don't think about that. It's just going to be you know, the prime day itself, but across not just Amazon, the weeks that follow, but other, other uh, retailers as well. Once again, all this information or most of this information can be found in our get prep for prime day uh, for Amazon prime day 2023 report, which you'll get a link for uh, in your email tomorrow. You can go to sky.io to our research section and download it as well. All right. Some questions have come in. Let me go ahead and look through here. We can answer a few. I'd like to get at least one question for each of you. Let's see the first one. Uh, what would be one thing you would want? Okay, so we, we I think I get it. So what this person's asking. So a lot of, um, there's been a lot of best practices, tips and, and tricks presented here today. How about Melissa? What's one of the things out of the million things we just went through in the last 45 minutes uh, that Amazon Mark, Amazon advertisers can be thinking about to really make Prime Day successful? 
Yeah, this is tough because there's a lot, but I think being intentional and purposeful with your strategy and your ad coverage is going to be really key in making sure that you're curating the shopper journey and having your your consumers experience your brand in the best way. Awesome. Um, next one. Um, oh, this was asked by one of our Sky attendees. Um, let's go with Nico. You know our product amazingly. Uh, what What's one feature of Sky out of the things that we mentioned or just say maybe the one that we didn't mention uh, that would give our clients maybe a leg up on Prime Day? I think definitely day parking and based on, you know, what we've mentioned about budgets uh, and not necessarily all having unlimited budget across, you know, to cover for, for all the demand that's out there. I think day parking is a very strategic tool for, for brands that perhaps have a more limited budget or, um, or are sure that they want to spend definitely way more on certain times of the day uh, that allows you to pace and phase your budget throughout both of the days um, with data uh, with hourly data uh, kind of uh, information and, and being kind of very intentional with that uh, with that phase and so I think definitely day parking if I had to choose one I'd probably choose the whole thing but if I had to choose one day parking is um, is the most uh, useful one for the day. Yeah, I can see that. You definitely want to spread out your budget. If you just go all in, I mean, you might be done by 8.30 a.m. So using day party, like you said, through Sky, being able to, um, you know, set your budgets by hour and and make sure that you're spending throughout the day. In fact, and I think mo- uh, all three of you mentioned at some point later on the day is when other people, you know, your competitors' budgets might be uh, running out. This is a strategy we used in search even, you know, 20 years ago that at towards the end of the day, you start to see CPCs drop because some of your competitors run out of budget. So using day party to make sure that you're still advertising towards the end of the day might give you some really amazing results. Uh, and let's take one last question, Peter, you haven't an- as answered one. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Post prime day, Peter, what should advertisers be taking into consideration? We mentioned a few things, but just wrap it up for us. Yeah, I mean, I think post Prime Day, people are going to be looking at their reporting, right? And I think, like we've talked about, it's important to have clarity on what you're trying to accomplish going into it so that you know what you're measuring coming out of it. And, you know, with that, Josh, I think at the top of the call, you mentioned in the Prime Day 2022 review, you know, spikes in spend and sales, three, 400 percent. Um, you know, so we want to look, are we meeting those benchmarks? Is that aligned with what our goals are for our brands? Um, did we hit our benchmarks for CPCs, for share of voice, for top line sales? Um, and hopefully we did, and we can call Prime Day a success. And then we can also use that to look forward to holiday, you know, as, as strange as it might sound when we're all having summer barbecues, uh, you know, Q4 will sneak up on us. And this type of tent pole event is, is just a great sort of indicator in terms of how will the competition change? How will the landscape be during the next tent pole event during Cyber Five? Uh, and I can use that data from Prime Day then uh, to help myself plan, you know, how much do I need to budget? How much should I be increasing my bids? Uh, how should I be adapting and using bid modifiers? So I think those are the things that people will look at, you know, looking back on performance, but also using that data to look forward for planning uh, for Cyber 5. Awesome. We got some other questions, but we're kind of running out of time here. So we're going to skip to the end. But if uh, I'll look through the questions, if I feel like there's some that 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 we can answer, I'll go ahead and email you directly. I'll get uh, Peter, Melissa, or Nico to help me out with that. So just go ahead and, and ask your questions. Even though we're moving on from Q&A, uh, get your final questions in because we're just about done here. Before we leave, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about our new great community of 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 marketers that we've launched called uh, The Breakthrough. You can find it at thebreakthrough.sky.io. You can also go to sky.io and look in our resources menu and you can get a get a link to The Breakthrough. <clears throat> uh, in The Breakthrough, we interview experts from around the industry. We uh, show off some great data and, and reports. We also have some awesome original content like our Omnichannel Forum series where we ask a whole panel of experts the same question about omnichannel marketing to help people plan and, and, and kind of trailblaze their omni-channel practices in their own organization. So check out the breakthrough, uh, the breakthrough.sky.io, or you can go right to sky.io and look in our resource section for a link to the breakthrough. This will also be, we'll send you a link in the email to the breakthrough tomorrow. So that's it. I'd like to thank our panelists, Melissa, 
Peter, Nico, thank you all for attending and good luck this Prime Day. Um, hopefully it'll be a success, a success, look, as a great success uh, and, and for years to come. So appreciate you and see you at the next Sky webinar. Cheers.